I made a commitment to the residents of New Britain when I was elected in November of 2013, and that was to make government more transparent and accessible to the people that we serve. We all too often hear about voters sending a message to politicians when votes are in. Lots of time it's an overdone statement meant to do little more than push an agenda. But in the case of a mayoral race in Connecticut, the message was clear. Someone new, someone with real fresh ideas, and someone younger than the usual political age of Methuselah. She is the youngest mayor of an American city, just nine miles outside of Hartford, Connecticut, and the type of job that could indeed portend great things for the future. Welcome to Midpoint, the Republican mayor of New Britain, Connecticut, Aaron Stewart. Madam Mayor, welcome in. Hi, Ed. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Have you gotten used to that yet? People coming up and saying, Madam Mayor, or what, what, what is the exact words that they use for you? It, Madam Mayor, uh, when we're in the council chamber, they refer to me as your honor. I'm still trying to get used to it. I'm fine with just Aaron. <laughs> Why at 27 years of age would you want to become mayor of a city? And certainly, let's be very honest, New Britain, it's tough times in New Britain. This is a very difficult economy and a city that basically doesn't really have a whole lot of sunshine on the horizon now. So why? Well, I disagree. I think there's plenty of sunshine on the horizon in New Britain. <laughs> That's course, quite all right. You're the mayor. You're supposed to do that. That's why I put it that uh, way. I know. I know. You know, I've been serving on different boards and commissions in the city in various capacities since I was 17 years old, uh, starting on the New Britain Youth and Family Services Commission, moving on to the Commission on Community and Neighborhood Development. Right before I, I ran for mayor, I was serving a uh, term on the New Britain Board of Education. And, uh, you know, all there's no a full disclosure here my father was also mayor of the city for eight years during that time that uh, i was also serving so uh, i wouldn't say I, i'm completely new with what the job entailed but i certainly uh, knew what i was getting into the whole reason i decided to run for mayor was because i saw that there was a uh, a lot of um there wasn't good feelings about what was going on in town. There was an ordinance that was being passed uh, that had to do with fining or charging landlords an additional $150 a year per unit. Now, uh, the city council was taking up uh, a public hearing on that, and it was going to be a lot of people coming to City Hall. So I figured I'd be a fly on the wall. I'd want to come and check it out. I showed up at City Hall that night and there was a thousand people packed into this building. Not just in this building, they were overflowing on the outside of City Hall, rioting, uh, picketing, it was insane. And I think it was at that moment that I realized that there needs to be some serious change in the communication between that top office and the people that, that we serve. And that was really the breaking point when I decided I'm going to give this a shot. We are talking about 73,000 residents, give or take a few in New Britain, who are overwhelmingly Democratic. So how then yes. did a Republican and a Republican female convince the Democrats that you were the right person for the job? You broke a lot of molds there. I certainly did. And, you know, I think it's just taking the approach of talking to people. And when you bring your message to folks, and the thing about New Britain is they don't vote for people in their local elections based on the party. They vote on the people that they know, the people they feel comfortable with. Uh, you know, my family's been in this town for hundreds of years. Uh, we have a lot of connections, whether it's through little leagues, whether, you know, my cousins are all coaches. I was a softball coach. Um, we know the families, we know the people, but I think the most important thing that resonates with folks uh, is when you're just honest with them. You know, I, I would always say to them, look, Democrat, Republican, it doesn't matter. Here's what I want to do for this city. We've got to get our finances back under control. We've got to start talking positively about what we have to offer. And we've got to make some serious considerations in what we can do to bring new business in. And I think I'm happy to say in the past year and a half that I've been there, we've done that. We've been honest with everyone. And they haven't been you know, always the most popular decisions. But if you're communicating with people, they can understand it and they appreciate you so much more for that. Well, it's interesting. Here was a story in the Washington Post recently that said that just 20 percent of Republican women want to see a female president. Now, this is interesting. It said nearly six in 10 Democrats want to see a female president. Fewer than one in five Republicans agree. 20 percent of the women in the GOP say they, quote unquote, personally hope for a president of their gender. You've got to be a little bit dismayed about that. Just 20 percent of Republican women polled want to see a female president. How do you break through that and get people to believe that the best person for the job is the best person for the job regardless? Well, I think that also plays into the fact of what female players are out there in politics. Um, and I think that's got a, a probably a big portion to do with the results of that poll. You know, there's uh, Republican women that certainly don't want to see Hillary uh, be the first female president. 
Um, and if there were maybe some other uh, high-level Republican women that were showing interest, I think those numbers would certainly change. I mean, to me, it doesn't really matter uh, whether it's a, a male or a female. I think just the right person for the job is the person that's going to you know, grab everyone's most attention. And right now, unfortunately, there's no female that has grabbed that type of attention. I got about two minutes left here. At 27 sure. years of age, are you on the cusp then? Because you're right in that millennial age. And we're told yeah. by a number of people that millennials are going to decide the next election. They will be deciding elections in the future. But there are those people who still say that millennials aren't that interested in politics. Come on, 20 somethings don't give a darn about what happens in politics and are interested in making money. Is this true? Do you intend to be a person who sits at the front of that and help to change that ideal? Absolutely. I mean, it is true. I mean, people in my generation are more concerned about getting their careers in order and, and making money. And politics certainly isn't a business where you make money. I'm learning that firsthand right now. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think that moving forward, um, it, just having younger candidates inspires uh, millennials to take an interest in the political process. You know, we were looking at during my campaign, I had thousands of kids, or I guess say kids, I guess I am one, right? That's okay, 27, you can still say kids, trust me, you're still yeah, okay. Right? You know, they came out to vote, they participated in the process, they helped volunteer for me, simply because someone their age was involved, and that got them involved by default. So I think as we start to see more millennial candidates come up, you'll see much more millennials taking an interest in the process. Is this the beginning of further aspirations and perhaps even something more regionally, statewide, and nationally down the road for Madam Mayor? Oh, God, you're giving me a heart attack live on air. Um, <laughs> I, I really couldn't tell you. I'm so focused on my job right now. I love what I do. I love the city of New Britain. I love making a difference here every day. If the cards are, if it's in the cards for me, then it is. But as for right now, I'm just kind of going with the flow. As for right now, you just want to make sure that you can balance a social life along with being mayor at 27, right? <laughs> It's not that easy. <laughs> I was going to say, it wouldn't make a difference, male or female, at 27. You've still got to figure out how to balance all this. You've got one heck of a job ahead of you. You've got some people who have put their faith behind you. And it's a pleasure to see that there are young people in this generation right now who are out there getting involved in the political process, Republican or Democrat. But especially good to see that a Republican is in there as well. Also <laughs> good to see. Mayor Aaron Stewart, we thank you so much for your time. Good luck in the job. We'll be checking in from time to time, I promise. Thank you so much, Ed. Take All care, right. everybody. Take care. In the end, it will be a true victory for those determined not to let it slip away, or it will be remembered as one of the single greatest wastes of time in modern American government. Think about that. That and much more after the break right here on Midpoint.